Hello everyone, welcome to It's Crochet O'Clock. My name is Stephanie and today we are working on part one of the Yaya's Hugs Crochet Along. As you can see, the square is rather large. I cannot fit it all into film, but or all into frame rather, but this is what we are going to be working on for part one. We are going to be working in Nurturing Fibers Eco Fusion in the colors Fawn and Sandstone for this project. If you would like the written pattern, you can get it by looking at the description box below. You can also join Join the It's Crochet O'Clock Facebook group to follow along and post your progress pictures with everyone else who is doing the crochet along. So let's get right into this, shall we? The foundation for Yaya's Hugs is a magic ring. I am a fan of the double magic ring. So we are going to start with color one, that is our variegated color or our color of pop for the project. For me, that is Eco Fusion in Sandstone. We are going to take this and we're going to wrap it around our fingers three times. Tuck that little tail in between your thumb and your index finger. Slip your hook under the first two loops. Grab that third loop, pull it through, and when you do, you'll twist just a little bit. And you'll see that it'll move freely along your fingers. Just gonna zip back to the back here. This yarn right here is your working yarn. You're gonna grab that and simply pull it through. That is your foundation for Yaya's Hugs. For round one, we're still gonna stay, of course, within this first color. We are going to chain three, and then we're going to make two double crochets in the magic ring. So there is one, and two, then we're gonna chain two, and then three double crochets. And then three double crochets, I'm gonna to refer to those as granny clusters as we continue to move through the project. We're gonna chain two once more well, not once more, we're gonna to have to do that again. Then make another granny cluster. That's three double crochets. Chain two. And then another granny cluster. going to chain two. Now this is the end of round one, but we need to close this magic ring. So pull up so you don't lose your work. Now the way people go wrong with the double magic rings is they simply just want to grab a hold of this tail and yank on it. You're either going to break your yarn or get super, super frustrated. So you don't want to do that. What you want to do is you want to pull on this tail very, very slowly and watch these two loops as I do so. You see how this one down here on the bottom, it's moving over that way. We wanna pull it from the opposite direction and it's going to close this other loop behind us. So we can close that and then you can pull on the tail freely and it will close up your magic ring. So at this point, put your yarn back on your hook and then you can grab that the top chain in the top in the chain three that we started out with and make a slip stitch. And then you're ready to fasten off for this round. Because we're going to switch colors for the next round. Make sure you leave in enough for you to weave in the ends. And that is round one and the foundation round. 
For round two, we are switching over to color two. That's our solid color, or it's going to actually end up being the main color of our blanket. Mine is fawn. And we're just gonna pick any of these corner spaces. It doesn't matter which one you start in. We're gonna start with a standing double crochet. So you're gonna yarn over on your hook and hold that yarn in place with your thumb and insert into any of those corner spaces and then create a double crochet. Just like normal, just a double crochet. So we're gonna place two more double crochets in that same corner space. And then chain two. And then make another granny cluster. That's three double crochets in that same corner space. Now this time we're not going to chain. We're just gonna jump right on over to this next corner space and place a double crochet there. Another granny cluster actually, so we'll need two more double crochets. And then chain two. And then another granny cluster all in that same corner space. And again, we are not going to chain. We're gonna jump right on over to this corner, place a granny cluster. And then chain two, then another granny cluster. I'm gonna jump right over to this last corner. No chain in between, granny cluster. Chain two, granny cluster. Again, all in that same corner space. And now without chaining, we are going to slip stitch to this first double crochet. That was our standing double crochet. And that is the end of round two. Now we're going to stay in this main color, color two, for round three. But we need to get over here to the corner. So we're just gonna slip stitch our way over there corner and now we can begin round three. To do that we are going to chain three. That counts as our first double crochet. We're going to make two more double crochets in this same corner space. And then chain two. And then granny cluster in that same corner space. Now we are going to not chain and we're going to make a granny cluster in between these two granny clusters. A granny cluster right there. No chains in between. Now we're going to not chain and we're gonna hop right on over to that corner. Granny cluster, just like the other corners. Chain two, and then a granny cluster.
do not chain. We're going to put a granny cluster right here in between these two clusters. No chain, hop to the corner, granny cluster, chain to granny cluster. going to place a granny cluster in between these two right here. No chain, jump to the corner, granny cluster, chain two, granny cluster. time, no chain, we're going to granny cluster in between those two clusters. And now we are going to slip stitch to the top of that starting chain three. And we will fasten off our work because we are going to be changing colors. And that is the end of round three. Let's get ready for round four. For round four, we are jumping back over to color one. That is our variegated color. And a little tip, there are a lot of people that have issues with granny squares kind of looking like they are tilting. And what I do to avoid that is I start on an opposite corner. This was the corner that I finished in. You can't see it because I've, wave, I've woven in my ends, but I can feel it because it's thicker from weaving in those ends. So what I'm going to do, and this is just optional, you don't have to do this, but you can choose any color or, or any corner that you want to start out in. I'm going for the opposite corner and we are going to make a standing double crochet in that corner just like we've done the other rounds. If I can get my yarn to cooperate with me. And then two more double crochets. Then chain two. And then granny cluster in that same corner space. Now we're not going to chain, we're going to place a granny cluster between the next two clusters. And again we're not going to chain, another granny cluster between the next two clusters. Don't lose your hook. We're not going to chain again. Go straight into the corner. Granny cluster, chain two, granny cluster, all in that same corner space.
Now no chain, jump in between, granny cluster. No chain, jump in between, granny cluster. No chain, jump to the corner, granny cluster, chain two, granny cluster. No chain, jump between the clusters and make another granny cluster. No chain, jump between the clusters, granny cluster. No chain, jump to the corner, granny cluster, chain two, granny cluster. There's my chain two. And there's my granny cluster. We're almost finished with this round. We're not going to chain granny cluster in between these two clusters. No chain. Jump right over here and make a granny cluster in between those two clusters. And now we are back at the start. We're not going to chain. You're going to slip stitch to the top of that standing double crochet. And then fasten off. Okay, so I'm sure that you could see how this was growing as we were working towards each round, we end up getting extra spaces as we continue on. So I'm not going to do the next 16 rounds with you. I'm going to let you do them by yourself because it's the exact same thing. It just keeps growing and growing and growing. What I will do is I will leave a graphic here that you can press pause on that will show you each round what the colors are that you're going to be using because we do alternate between them. Sometimes we have two rows of the main, well, color two, which I call the main color because there's more of it than the color one. Sometimes there's three. So I'm going to leave a graphic here for you so you can see which colors go where. Just remember that if you are staying, if the next round is the same color, Remember to slip stitch over. You don't have to fasten off. You can, of course, if, if you want to, but you can slip stitch over to and, and then start the way that we did this one. Or you can fasten off completely up to you. And remember that whenever you fasten off, a trick to keep it from tilting to the side is to go to the opposite corner. So for this next round, I will be starting in this corner because I fastened off over here. I'm going to start in this corner. So those are little tips for you. When I come back, I will have all of the main square completed to show you. See you then. 
And this is the completed center square for Yaya's Hugs. I am so sorry, it is rather large, so I cannot fit it into the entire frame at once. But on the final round, you should have 20 granny clusters on each side. And that is the end of week one for Yaya's Hugs. Thank you so much for hanging out with me and for doing the crochet along. I will see you guys next week. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't done so already and make sure you hit that like button. Bye!